All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, so we're going to start out with here with a little tax brain teaser about my man, Bill. We'll see Bill on the next slide. So we're going to go down the numbers real quick. So Bill is retired and has a taxable income of $46,138. He's in the 22% tax bracket. This includes $38,000 in IRA income, plus $37,500 in Social Security benefits. So Bill, he taps into his IRA for an extra $1,000 for a concert road trip. The question is, how much will he owe in taxes on that extra $1,000? All right, so he pays $0.22 cents in federal income tax for every additional dollar. Therefore, if he took $1,000, he should owe $220, right? Yes. And that's Bill right there, right? Yes. Of course. <laughs> of course. So, well, for, wrong. Wrong? What do you mean wrong? He owes $407 in, in, in taxes. That's in the 40.7% tax rate on that income. Thanks to the madness that is our tax code and the formula that determines how Social Security is taxed. All right, Vic. On that, all right. On that, on that, after that teaser. All right. So, good morning. Thank you, thank you all for coming. My name is uh, Victor Connor. I'm a chartered retirement uh, planning counselor, wealth management specialist. And you've met Max Westerman, investment advisor, representative, and financial advisor. First, thank you for coming. The fact that you're here shows that you understand there's a problem and you're looking for a solution. Why do we give those? We give these to educate, to inform, and let you know the track tax traps that are out there and how to get around them. Unfortunately, we see way too many mistakes. People make way, pay way too much in taxes, and it makes our job harder. Taxes are complex and jargon-filled. Jargon However, the underlying concepts are straightforward once um, you understand them. The presentation today will be organized into four different um, keys. Each one builds on the next for solution. So, I'm, by the way, in your desk, you should have an agenda. So open your packets. Those of you that are watching online, there'll be a link below for the package. And first, there'll be an agenda. That's what we're going to go through today. And then there's some handouts that we'll be referencing. Key financial data, you'll find an awful... That's it. Good, good. You'll find an awful lot of very good data there. We're going to reference some... Famous estate planning blunders, you'll see that. Some important um, dates for retirement dates throughout the year. What else have we got? Oh, um, if you belong to a group or an organization, we do give presentations on a number of topics. There's, there's listed. And finally, the most important thing is our evaluation form. And if you'd like to request a consultation after the meeting, that's it. Yep. After the meeting, that's what you use. Okay. So, the last thing I want to assure you is this. This is not a sales presentation. We are strictly here to educate you and try and show you the problems and how it can cost you a lot of money. So, and any time it comes to do with taxes, work with your advisor, your professional advisor. Whoever does your taxes, and when we get to estate planning, whoever does um, your estate documents. Traditional IRAs, like annuities as well, taxes are deferred, and you pay income tax when you take the money out. Roth IRAs, on the other hand, are tax-free, like municipal bonds. It grows tax-free, your money comes out tax-free, and there are tax-advantage investments, capital gains. Everyone knows there's a favorable tax rate on capital gains, qualified dividends, Dividends off ordinary stock are qualified. There's just you have to hold it 30 days before and 30 days after for it to get the treatment. Immediate annuities. And then finally, we're here in Florida. We do not have a state tax. But if you've moved from another state that has either income taxes or inheritance taxes in your estate documents, you declare a domicile. Moving to Florida and just changing your driver's license and voters' registration won't do it alone. So we'll talk about that shortly. So 
This is our team. That's everyone in the office. Uh, Victor and Max, that's who you're seeing today. And we concentrate our practice in wealthy individuals and taxes and retirement planning. So here we are now. Okay. Um, you're entering a new and complex and different world. Most of your life, you've been in what we call the accumulation phase. You're saving up for retirement. And now you're looking at the distribution phase. <clears throat> There's no more child care credits, no more mortgage deduction, no more paid insurance from your employer, no more 401k. Now, you're in a new world. God bless you. You're in a new world of Social Security, Medicare. You'll hear RMDs frequently, required minimum distributions. And <clears throat> so you'll also be involved with Medicare and um, long-term care. So next, here is what we see. <clears throat> People often pay more taxes in retirement than they expected excuse me, because of a confusing system that treats various income types differently and contains hidden taxes <clears throat> and hidden penalties and costs. We're going to talk about that. And you've got to understand timing <coughs> excuse me, is crucial and how you structure things is very important. So first, what's the first thing we need to understand about retirement and taxes. Key number one, Max, that's you. All right, I'll do key number one. Thank you, Victor. You're welcome, Max. All right, <clears throat> key number one, you have to know what your after-tax retirement savings picture looks like before retiring. Okay, so if you save $500,000 in your 401k or IRA, it's not really $500,000. 500,000 could be 325,000 if it really if it if you're in the 35% tax bracket. 500,000 could be 315,000 if you're in the 37% tax rate. So, to start your RMDs. The RMD was 72. The Secure Act of 2.0 pushed RMDs to 73. If you're born between 1951 and 1959. Before, or, or if you're born after 1959, now it's at 75. So let's take a look at this um, chart, the cumulative after tax chart. So if you had 500,000 and it was growing <clears throat> at 6% for 25 years, if you were in the 0% tax rate, it would be over $900,000. If you were in the 12% tax rate, it would be just over $800,000. If you're in the 33% tax rate, it would be at $625,000. So you can see based on this chart that however much you pay in taxes, that is what, what happens to your money versus, versus the growth at a 6% rate. That makes a huge difference. That makes a huge difference. Okay, so, well, at least I still have Social Security to supplement my income and Medicare to pay my health costs, right? Okay. All right, Vic, this is key number two, Victor. All right. So you think you have Social Security, but you've got to understand Social Security and Medicare have their own tax traps, and you need to plan for them. So let's take a look at some of the surprises you're going to see. Remember, Bill, where'd Bill go? There we go. Remember, Bill? Now, I want you to notice, first of all, the IRA income, the only difference is he took out $1,000. That was the difference. However, when he took out the $1,000, it increased, I want you to look up there, both his AGI, adjusted gross income, and his taxable income by $1,850. For every dollar he took out, it in, increased his taxable income by $1,850. And you're wondering what happened? That, wait, oh, did I, did, did I, okay, wait a minute. I forgot. 
Bill got hit by the Social Security tax torpedo. Can it go? Wait. Oh, wait, you got to go back. Our torpedo apparently is not properly armed. Okay, that caused him to pay $407 more in taxes. Remember, he took out 1000 It cost him $407, or 40.7%. Why? It was a Social Security tax torpedo. For every dollar he took out, he also had to add 85 cents in Social Security owners. Next, Medicare. Medicare has its own particular tax torpedoes. And you're going to watch this. It has some traps you need to know about. So first, we got George and Martha. That's not George and Martha Washington, is it? I think so. Oh, I'm not sure they had taxes yet. All right, <laughs> watch out for the Medicare Irma tax cliff. What is Irma? Oh, now I remember. Now, income-related monthly adjustment account. Those are surcharges added to your Medicare Part B and Part D. Only happens, by the way, if you have 97000 or more in income for singles, 194000 for married. And the key is it goes back for two years. Okay, so here, George and Martha, they have Medicare B and D. They have 306000 That's a key thing. In 2021, two years ago, um, so they sell. Watch to what the timing does. He sells a stock for a one thousand dollar gain, kind of like Bill taking the thousand dollars in his IRA money. Now he sells stock for a thousand dollar gain. So what does he own in that stock sale? One hundred eighty. I'm sorry, eighteen point eight percent. One hundred eighty eight dollars. How? We know the 15% long-term capital gain, 150, and he had the net investment income tax of 3.8%. Yeah, that's right. Yes, bringing it to $188. That bumped him into the next tier. I mean, I want you to look up here. Notice between 153 and 183, uh, married her for joint 30601. As soon as he got into the 306, he jumped up a bracket. So instead of paying 329.70 a month per person, he's now paying $428.60 per person. That's an extra $98 a month, or roughly $200, $197 a month. If you add that up, it's about $2,370. Now, Part D, guess what? also has its surcharges. Again, bumped them up. And so now they each pay another $39 a month, or 19 each, 39. That's an extra $460. Watch this. Let's put this all together. Um, George now pays eleven eighty six for his um, Part B, $230 for Part D. Martha pays the same. He now has to pay 2000 $834.40 in extra Medicare costs. But wait, there's more. So remember the $1,000 of, of um, income tax, that I mean, of, of the gain? The $1,000, he paid $188 in taxes. But now that pushed him into the next Medicare uh, cost tier. So that uh, triggered an additional... $2,834.40. So look at this. The $1,000 stock sale, not only did he pay the taxes, he paid the Medicare surcharges. That $1,000 of income cost $3,022 in taxes and costs. Anything that increases as your income increases, we consider a tax. So the $1,000 cost him $3,000. That's why we're saying timing is crucial. You need to know those brackets and where they are. Number three, the Medicare enrollment gap. You know, here's Jim and Ann. They were both um, 
60, I'm sorry, uh, both 68, Jill retired at 65, and Ann at 66. Prior to retirement, Ann's employer provided the health insurance. So they didn't need, they didn't think they needed to sign up for Medicare. Even though they weren't using it, their employer's health care is second to Medicare, and when they did not enroll, it cost them a 10% penalty for life. In the first year, it's roughly $395 for a couple, and over the years, it can cost them as much as $10,000. Again, an issue of timing. So, you're probably going, wow, are there other tax traps that we will face in retirement? Yes, there are, and that brings us to our third key. All right, key number three. We got one more to go. All right, you must plan how and when you will use taxable, tax-deferred, and tax-free assets to manage your income and tax brackets efficiently. All right, so example number four. We have Sam and, Ma and Mary. They both have IRAs of 450000 They both, oh, there we go. They both have Roth IRAs also of 60000 And then they have a joint account of 300000 They want to take out in their retirement $8,500 a month in spending money. So a total of all this money is $1.3 million. So the question is, where would you take the money from first? All right, let's get into it. So, example four. So, which accounts do I spend first? You might be asking. Most people think, first, take the after-tax money in the bank. Then the tax-deferred IRA money. Follow that by the tax-free Roth IRA money. That is the conventional wisdom. It has been promoted by many firms for some time now. And conventional wisdom, as you might know, isn't always the best. All right, so these are some multiple studies. These are some studies that have shown that the conventional wisdom approach probably isn't ideal. So if everybody wants to maybe take a picture, take out your phones and um, take a picture of this slide so you can maybe read it on your own time or jot it down with a pen or pencil. So um, read some of those. Those are pretty good. So example four. So one strategy, consider the Roth IRA conversion. So... The Roth IRA conversion in low tax years before RMDs start, this is a, um, the new approach that people are doing. The, IRA, the Roth IRA conversion moves money from an IRA or other pre-tax retirements like 401ks to a Roth IRA. And we'll show you an example of how it's done in the next slide. But the amount you convert added to income and taxed at your, your rate. So if we have Jill here, so Jill converts $100,000 from her IRA to her Roth IRA. Jill, oh. <laughs> Jill will have to add $100,000 to her income. So the conversion income will be taxed at Jill's rate. So this is called the filling the bucket, filling the, filling the bracket tax approach for the Roth IRA conversion strategy. Okay, so you have the... You may be in the middle of one tax bracket with room to add another without pushing into the higher tax bracket. So the 2023, the 22% the tax bracket for married, married filing jointly return goes from basically 89000 to 190000 If the file joint return and income is 100000 you can add in another 90000 without going to the next bracket. A Roth IRA conversion like the, this one could make sense if you converted a large IRA over time. So we have the example right here. So you see before the conversion, the bucket in the 22% isn't fully full. So you fill that up with the Roth IRA conversion income and you fill up your whole bucket all the way up to the full amount in the 22% tax bracket. <laughs> so then you once that is filled up, You'll maximize that bracket so you're not going to be overtaxed. You won't go to the 24% tax bracket. And we'll convert this from your large IRAs to the Roth IRA 
for years to come. You just have to maximize your tax brackets. And we have software that does all this. And if you we have your tax return. Add your 401k into the Roth. Correct. You can also do the 401k into the Roth. So, key financial data. So, Victor, do you want to hold oh, this up? Oh, okay. I'll hold it. So, we got Victor here, the great model. Hello. Uh -huh. All right. So, he's holding up. Everybody, take out your packets. This is the key financial data that is in your packets. I think it's the third one. Um, there we go. Yep. There you go, sir. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> in the packets, financial data 2023, the married filing jointly. Victor, can you point that out? Yep, that's right over here. You see it on the arrow? Yep, so right over there. Right over right, right there. So the 12% the tax bracket is 22000 to 89000 And then it jumps. See the big jump right there? From the 12% to the 22%. Your choice is to pay 12%. Or 22. That's why we keep talking about timing. It becomes so important. You can choose. You're going to pay the taxes. You can choose. Take it early in a low year and get 12% or wait and take it at 22%. Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. So other possible approaches for withdrawing tax-free money from life insurance policies to keep income low as well. Selling highly, highly appreciated stock for low or no capital gains or taking distributions from IRAs or 401ks to take advantage of the lower tax rates. Um, just out of curiosity, everybody in the audience, uh, if you could raise your hand and tell me, do you think taxes are going higher or lower um, for years to come? Uh, most people think that they're going to be lower now than they are going to be in the future. So... Um, all right, most of you, looks like most of you say that they're going to be the lowest now. This is the lowest they're going to be, and then they're going to be higher as years progress. So take advantage of when they are low. So take advantage of when they're low. Exactly. All right, so, so two other pre-retirement strategies. If you qualify an HSA account, which is a health savings account, you can um, deduct this, the health savings. Um, small business owners, to be extra savvy, Use the uh, qualified business um, income or the QBI. <clears throat> and then both help manage tax exposure and provide tax-free benefits. Um, if either have applied to you, talk to us after this. We'll, we can help you guys with that. All right, so example five, charitable giving and tax planning. This is the final one. Um, look at RMDs and charitable giving may work for, for your benefit. So if you're charitable person and you give to charity, um, this is very beneficial for you and your family. So let's go through an example. So we have Albert and Shirley here. They're both in the 24% tax, tax bracket. Um, they give $5,000 to charity, and then they have <clears throat> 15000 in existing itemized deductions. And then the standard deduction for the married filing jointly in 2023 is $27,700. But you might be saying, wait, why does it but say, wait, there's more. but wait, there's more. <laughs> but you might be saying, wait, why are they, why do they have the 30,700? That's because when you get over the age of 65, you get each additional $3,000. So that brings us to 30,700. 30, so with 15,000 of existing itemized deductions, it's under the 30,000 standard deduction. So... What happens tax-wise if they donate $5,000 to charity? No federal tax, fe federal tax benefit as it doesn't exceed the $30,700 standard deduction. Yeah. Okay. See that? So, qualified charitable <coughs> distribution giving after 70 and a half. So, the QCD, qualified charitable distribution after 70 and a half. It's called qualified charitable distribution for short. Or, or QC, QCD, QCD for short. short, sorry. Qualified charitable distribution was longer. <laughs> yeah, longer that was more of a mouthful. Okay. <laughs> All right. If you are 70 and a half or older, you, you can make qualified charitable contributions of up to $100,000 each year from your IRA. It must go directly to the charity. And that is key, by the way. Yes, that is very key. If, if you're both... If you're married, you both qualify, so you, each of you can give $100,000 from your IRAs. 
So QCDs count towards your RMD every year and most go directly from your IRA to qualified charities. All right, there's no income tax deduction. Um, when you make a QCD from the IRA, income is not counted when you compute your taxes. Unless you exceed the standard deduction, there is no deduction. So if you, if you don't exceed that 3700 you don't get a deduction for making the donation. Yes. Yeah, okay. exactly. So, all right, option one. So this is important. So we have the charity here gets the $5,000. It goes from, it satisfies the five, the 5,000 satisfies your RMD. The 5,000, as you can see, Victor, Victor's a great model. So as you can see, so it goes from his IRA to his checking account. He takes the distribution. So he takes the distribution, goes from his IRA to his checking account, and then it goes to the charity. So as you can see right here, the charity gets the 5,000. The 5,000 satisfies the RMD. The 5,000 is reported as taxable income. The tax bill and the distribution at the 24% tax bracket equals $1,200. The total cost of charitable contribution, $6,200. All right, let's go to option two. He gave them five. He had to pay taxes. Cost them $6,200. But watch this. Watch this. This is how you get around that little tax, that $1,200. And you can give that $1,200 to your kids or grandkids or, or what have you. Or your financial advisor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the cost of the... QCD, Qualified Charitable Distribution, Contribution. So, charity still gets their $5,000. Thank you to the chair. Thank you. The $5,000 satisfies the RMD. All right, good. You're done for the year. The $5,000 is excluded from taxable income. So, it goes from directly from your IRA to the charity. Doesn't go to the, your bank, your checking account or savings account, which is the middleman. Goes from directly from your IRA to the charity. So the tax bill and the distribution equals a big goose egg, zero. Um, the total cost of charitable contribution is the $5,000, a $1,200 savings from the non-QCD option. That's what we mean by tax trap. Doing it the way Max just laid out from the Irish state to the charity still satisfies your RMD, but you save $1,200. You save $1,200. All right, per person. Per person. So if you did it twice, if you both, if both your uh, the husband and the wife have um, five thousand for their RMDs, they would save twenty four hundred dollars by doing it this way. All right, Vic, you're All back right. up. The model is back. Yes, and I'd like to remind you of everything. Max just went through five different strategies, all perfectly legitimate, but the way that you performed them, and the order that you did them saved you, in one case, $407, in another case, $3,000, and in another case, $1,200. That's what we mean by timing is crucial. So the next issue, estate planning. At this stage, it is still important that you look at estate planning because you need to organize your assets for your family and for passing on. So, my first example. Many of you remember James Gandolfini, an actor and producer known for his being Tony Soprano um, in the, uh, I'm sorry, in a crime boss in The Sopranos. He died unexpectedly at 51 in Italy. He left 80% to his daughter and sisters 20% to his wife, the mistake cost him $30 million of his $50 million estate. Wow. Wow. That's over half. Yeah. Half, over half his estate. Yes. Now, remember the last scene? The last scene. Tony's sitting at the table. It's, the camera's going from Tony to his daughter outside. Tony to his daughter. And you're wondering, is his daughter going to walk in? Or is it the mafia hitman that's going to come in? And then, boom, the screen goes black. The final story ends. The story is unresolved. No deathbed, no final words, his, just as his real life ended. And that thing cost him 30 
million. Now, also, you might think, I hope to have assets to pass to my family. How does retirement planning figure into this? We just talked about Tony, um, I mean, Tony Soprano. In your handouts, you're also going to see famous estate planning blunders. And if you look on there, it starts with him. Prince lost $100 million. Whitney Houston gave her daughter, by mistake, $2 million at 21, which she died in blue in a couple of years later. Philip Seymour Hoffman, $12 million estate taxes. Jim Morrison, his estate went to his girlfriend. And you already saw James Gandolfi. So you're going to find those interesting. So taxes in retirement, we're sort of summing it up. Here is the deal. Did I skip one? No, OK. In pre-retirement, the first thing you need to know, as Max pointed out, you really need to understand how much you have in your retirement accounts. If you have a half a billion dollars, it's not all yours. The government still has a vested interest, and they will get their taxes. Could be 500, could be 400, could be 300, depending on your tax break. And in the lower years, you begin funding your Roth accounts. And you first retire. You need to understand Social Security. When do you take it? We'll cover that in a different seminar. But what the taxes are, how much you'll be taxable. If your income is low enough, none of it is taxable. Your income gets higher, 85% becomes taxable. That was Bill. He was in the part that's 85%. He added $1,000 of income. He had to add another $850 in Social Security. Then middle retirement. Whether you want to or not, you're going to have required minimum distributions. And if your retirement account is significant enough, the RMDs alone push you into a higher tax bracket. So there's a way to manage that. And if you're charitably inclined, you can manage your RMDs to not affect your income tax. All of this leads to an obvious solution. By the way, we also talk about estate planning. Um, we've been doing a lot of estate planning for decades now. We have advanced software. We will look at your will, your pour over trust, living will, all your estate documents, and we will create an estate tax um, snapshot that shows how the money flows upon your device. It also will look for issues you may want to resolve when you have the time. A very current thing, we find out the successor trustee is your older brother, which is 10 years older than you, or another relative, which has already died. So this is one of the things that we have um, available if you would like to take advantage of it. All this put together is really called, whoop, uh, and we already talked about this. This is the solution. You anticipate ahead of time where you're going to hit, be hit with the extra taxes, where you're going to come across the tax traps, and you understand how much it can hit. And now you also understand, at least, timing is crucial. We talked about the difference in timing and what a difference it made. You saw Bill. You saw George and Martha. You saw everybody and the timing and difference. So you need to manage your taxes along with your distribution, which then brings us to strategic tax consulting. You need to have an overall plan. One of the other services you can have, <coughs> you need to coordinate your tax returns with some tax planning. And so now Max is going to bring us up to the end and put it all together. All right. Thanks, Vic. You're welcome. All right. Oh, wait. I forgot. And by the way, for those of you watching this on Zoom, all of these things are available at the link below. Sorry. Okay. All right. So you might be, th oh. so you might be thinking, gosh, how in the world will we ever manage all this? You know, I was just thinking that. How you were just thinking that? that? Gosh. All right. This is a good question. So let's bring it all together. All right. So start by creating a, re creating a retirement tax planning strategy. That's number one. In a minute, we'll ask you to complete this valuation form that we, um, we talked about earlier, if everybody could open up their packets and take this out. It's the yellow piece. It's the thick yellow paper. So 
take that out and fill this out. We got our model back up there here. There we go. All right, so he's going to demonstrate, fill that out. Um, this is a complimentary one-hour review. If you complete the form, we'll schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting to review your retirement savings needs and taxes. There's no obligation or cost for this. Um, you'll sit down and we'll go through everything. Yep, that's it, sir. There you go. So, um, yeah, we'll go through it all. All right. So this, you might be saying, okay, well, what are we going to talk about in the one-hour one, one hour meeting, the one-on-ones? Um, so if you're not sure what to do, we'll take advantage of our offer, first off. Second, we offer the one-hour complimentary review. What are we talking about? Well, How much does it cost? It's free. Oh. Free. Uh, we'll tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly about your portfolio, about your taxes, so bring that in. Um, your choice is to learn by making your own mistakes or hire a team of working professional professionals who already knows the mistakes to avoid. We know the mistakes because we've seen so many other people already make them. And, and, read, and read about them. can't do anything. And read about them, yeah. So, by the way, our BOGO... Incentives work. So, for those of you who come in for a consultation, bring your last year's tax return, current investment statements. If if you want, we could do estate documents like Victor talked about, and with our AI, um, we'll provide a gift for your efforts. All you do is spin the wheel. Yeah. What do you get? You get a twenty-five dollar gift card to Starbucks. Or a $50 gift card to Publix. Or a 75... Where shopping is a pleasure. A $75 gift card to Sushiyama or Savaki Grill, which we had yesterday, which was actually very good. Uh, Greek food. Which is where we're at. Or a free round of golf at Wanderers with yours truly. Or a... Yeah. <laughs> or a Massage Envy gift card. So that's what you'll get in the raffle. All right, so where are we located? You might be asking. So Where are uh, we located? I was asking. <laughs> where are we located? We're located to come here to spin the wheel. You can come to 8788 Boynton Beach Boulevard, Suite 100, Boynton Beach, Florida. It's on, it's on your packets. It's in there, too. Um, and then Josh Johnson created this QR code that everybody can take out their phones now and um, scan, take a picture of, and um, scan, and that actually brings you right to the Google, Google, the Google Maps. Maps, and um, you'll be able to um, follow there, and you'll be at our office. This is our okay. number, and then you look for the Canyon Town Center, and uh, Victor, point that out to everybody. By the way, this is a Greek restaurant. If you know the Canyon, Canyon Town Center, that's a Greek restaurant. There's Sushiyama, and we're right there. And we're right there. And then we're right there, um, Raymond yep. James, right there. So All right. I'm trying to say it's convenient and easy. Convenience is key. So now, if you have, I think we've covered most everything. Does anyone here have any questions you haven't heard the answers to? All right. All right. That's it. Thank you.